Hey guys, so uh, we've got a pretty short lesson today. Uh, lesson five is talking about the long-term and short-term changes uh, in Earth's climate. And if you want to follow along your textbook, um, we are in chapter 8.9. So uh, to start off, um, take a look at this animation on the screen here. And uh, what this is showing is the breakup of what has been called the uh, supercontinent of Pangaea. This is uh, what we believe um, all of the landmass on Earth looked like about 225 uh, million years ago during the uh, Permian era, or Permian era. Sorry about that. Um, when we talk about Pangaea, we talk about plate tectonics and continental drift. Uh, plate tectonics is a theory um, that all of Earth's continents today um, have moved slowly over the surface of the Earth for the past few hundred million years. Um, part of that idea is that at one point in time, 225 million years ago, there was a supercontinent named Pangaea. Uh, if you take a look in your notes, you'll see um, how it's thought that Pangaea has broken up over the past 200 million years or so, um, going from the Permian era to the Jurassic era to present day. And uh, you can see how these continents used to fit together as kind of little pieces to a puzzle. If you were to take the continents today, though, and try to um, stick them together, you will notice that they don't fit as well. Um, a lot of this is due to the fact that some of the landmass is now covered by water. It's eroded away or it's... Uh, and it's moved to um, places where you may not expect. So some of the continents have drifted a little bit further than others. Um, so uh, why does um, why does this matter? Why does continental drift matter? Um, well, continental drift, the fact that these continents are moving further and further apart speaks to the fact um, that it can change some of these important characteristics of our planet. So as the continents move, um, we can have changes in the ocean and the wind patterns. Um, changing the ocean and the wind patterns can affect heat transfer. Um, we know that uh, waters or large bodies of water can act as heat sinks. Um, so changes in these patterns uh, can affect the way that heat is distributed across our planet. Uh, the change of land masses or the distribution of land mass change um, can cause uh, issues arising. Um, large land masses, for example, have very cold winters and very warm summers. Um, so if a large land mass were to break up into two smaller land masses, you could see um, how that would lead to a large change in the climate of that region. Uh, obviously now as um, continents drift apart or as uh, plates maybe uh, bump into each other, uh, we might be able to or might see the formation of new mountain ranges. Uh, as we have new mountain ranges, the immediate um, regional climate changes significantly because a mountain range will prevent, for example, um, winds from passing through or it might cause uh, different sorts of climate to happen around that particular area. If we look at the uh, long-term cycles in climate, um, it's believed that uh, the climate here on Earth um, cycles between what we're going to call ice ages and interglacial periods. Um, an ice age is a period of time when the Earth is um, colder and much of it is covered, uh, of course, in ice. Uh, the op or maybe not the opposite of that, but uh, the, an interglacial period um, is any period of time between ice ages where the planet is warming up. Uh, so we are currently, it's thought that we are currently in an interglacial period. However, uh, you will hear a lot of climate change, climate change skeptics say that, well, we're in an interglacial period right now, which is why our Earth is warming up so much. However, the amount that it is warming up is outside of the normal range or what would be expected to be the normal range. Um, the last um, ice age was about 20,000 years ago, is when our Earth experienced the last ice age. The average temperature then was about 10 degrees lower than it is 
today. Again, that is an average. Um, it, that can be drastically different on different ends of the earth. Um, Canada, for example, in that last ice, ice age was covered in about three kilometers uh, thick ice. So we are currently in a warming period. Um, these warming periods are last about 100,000 years. So what causes these interglacial periods and these ice ages? Um, if we um, talk about space just for a second, and I know that's not the point of this course, um, but we know that the Earth rotates about the Sun, and the Earth also rotates about itself. Um, so when we talk about uh, the rotation of the Earth and the ice ages, um, there is a predictable pattern to the rotation of the Earth, and uh, its eccentricity, so the shape of the orbit, um, the elliptical-ness, uh, I guess, of its orbit, um, the tilt of the Earth, so the tilt of its axis, we know that the Earth doesn't spin um, necessarily upright from pole to pole. Uh, well, sorry, it does spin across its poles, but its two poles aren't um, exactly at, let's say, 0 and 180 degrees. They're a little bit off-center. And then, of course, um, the wobble of the Earth, so um, how it spins around another axis. So you can see on the diagram there that uh, the Earth will go about the Sun um, on those yellow dotted lines, uh, the tilt of the Earth away from the normal tells you where it's spinning, and then the, uh, you can look at the precision there to, to, um, to think about the wobble around that axis. So all these three um, changes in rotation uh, affect whether we are in an interglacial period or an ice age. So last but uh, not least, um, short-term changes in climate or short-term variations in climate um, are brought about by, there's a lot of um, reasons, but here's three main ones. We can talk about volcanic eruptions, um, and this here is to fill in your notes. So uh, when volcanoes erupt, um, a lot of rocks or dust or gases are thrown into the atmosphere. Uh, sulfur dioxide is one of them, uh, SO2, and that's a gas that is uh, spewed up by volcanoes. And um, that gas actually reflects the sun, and it'll cool down the earth temporarily. Um, another one would be um, changes in the sun's radiation. Now, this isn't um, this is not an idea that's known too well. Uh, we aren't 100% sure why the sun um, goes through these hot flashes, and sometimes it'll emit a whole lot of energy. Um, but the amount of solar uh, radiation changes vary in very, very small amounts. Uh, it's measurable, um, but it's not a whole lot that it has a huge effect on us. Uh, and it happens over a long period of time. So it happens over about an 11 year cycle. We're currently in what we call um, a solar minimum where the uh, thermal energy from the sun is a little bit uh, lower than average. But as you can see by the chart in your notes, it's not there's not a huge um, variation there. Uh, lastly, um, changes in air and ocean currents do occur regularly, and these um, can have uh, variations in, in short-term variations in climate. Um, they can be little things. I mean, not little things, but short-term things like tsunamis or um, hurricanes, perhaps. So um, a famous, let's say, a famous um, shift in air and ocean currents is what we call El Nino. Um, it's a periodic shift in uh, Pacific winds and ocean currents. And it causes places like southwest coast of, uh, sorry, not southwest coast, the west coast of South Africa to kind of receive, the, receive this warmer, uh, wetter weather. And you can see that in the um, pictures that are in your notes. So that's it for lesson five. Um, I hope you were able to fill out your notes. If not, you can watch this video again. Um, good luck, and we'll see you in class.